at Steve Perryman after injury. Perryman, 31 years old next Tuesday, and he resumes the right-back position in place of Paul Price. The other Spurs change and enforced one in attack. Steve Archibald has flu, so Gary Mabbott pushes forward from midfield to play in his sixth different position since joining Tottenham at the start of the season. He has played before as a striker for Bristol Rovers, and the switch means that Mick Hazard returns in midfield. And after criticising his side so fiercely last week, Birmingham's Ron Saunders makes three changes. Mick Harford, David Langan and Mark Dennis all return after lengthy injury spells. Out go Tony Evans, Alan Kirbishley and Ian Handysides, who is substitute. So, although Langan and Dennis are better known as fullbacks, they look like starting this match in midfield. Referee Les Burden waits to start the match, but the tune over the loudspeaker is Aussie's dream, because the Tottenham fans, having just heard the news officially confirmed over the loudspeaker, are in good heart. Birmingham City struggling at the wrong end of the first division to kick off blue shirts, white shorts, only two goals away from home in the league this season in nine matches. 11 there was Dennis, there's an offside flag up, but Tottenham have the ball anyway, with Glenn Hoddle. Spurs themselves, only three goals in their last seven league matches, only one of which has been won. They'll be hoping to improve that record this afternoon against the goalkeeper there, Tony Coton. Hagen, lofted forward, Roberts, Langan, Harford, Dillon, looking for Ferguson, who could be a threat in the air to Spurs, Dennis, Lacey, Ferguson, Hazard was the tackle, Hoddle looking up to see the two front runners, both marked, checked, found Lacey and then found Hewton. Galvin. Villa. Bit short for Chris Hewton, but he made it. Burnley played the ball right across to Mark Dennis for Birmingham. Two big strikers pulling away to the far side here. Ferguson and Harford. Both well over six foot. Broadhurst. That's not the kind of cross that they will thrive on. Villa. And through the middle goes Gary Mabbott. He's on his own at the minute. Crooks is just going across to the left now, but Mabbott didn't have too much on. Dylan. And Mark Dennis seeing plenty of the ball. Looks for Ferguson. This is the central striking partnership that Ron Saunders has got high hopes of now. Mick Ferguson and the other Mick, Mick Harford, who scored nine goals in 12 games at the end of last season to help Birmingham clear of relegation. Oh, it's Crooks. Byron Stevenson made the mistake and Garth Crooks got in behind him. Now, Crooks, although he's the top scorer, hasn't got one in the last six games for the first team and was given a reserve match earlier this week to sharpen up and scored then, but he was too high there. Only just. Birmingham have scrapped quite well away from home in uh, recent matches. Five draws in succession on opponents' grounds in the league. And it's... Uh, Last week's home performance that disturbed Ron Saunders there in the centre of the picture. Ron Saunders, who's the 13th manager since the war at St Andrews. And it certainly hasn't been a lucky seat. Driven by Hewton. From Stevenson, it went straight to Villa. To his left is Galvin, doesn't need him. And brings a save from Tony Coton. One of those 
who feel that if Ricky Villiard was to shoot more often, he'd get far more goals. He certainly packs a powerful drive. The corner taken quickly, and he's there again. So too is Galvin. Here's Hazard. Kevin Broadhurst in a good position here. Tottenham are outnumbered. There's a chance on to the right with Kevin Dillon. And Birmingham have got three players in the centre. And one of them is Harford. <laughs> it was a good swift break by Birmingham, but in return, Spurs have got four against four. Offside. That was uh, rapid stuff after 20 minutes of play. This is Blake and Crooks. And this is Villiard. And now Dennis. And in comes Hewton, backed up by Roberts. Tottenham crowd going a little impatient because they've got plenty of possession here, but Birmingham so far have defended well. Villiard. Hoddle. Galvin. Seven white shirts forward in this attack. Eight now with Hazard. Good effort! Well, Spurs lack of goals recently is something that uh, they've been very conscious of in working hard in training to try and put it right and uh, shoot on sight is the policy so far of the midfield players today well halfway through the first half and Keith Birkinshaw is just back from the airport having completed arrangements with Ozzy Ardiles takes his seat on the bench to Dillon and Birmingham have now got five players in attack Langan with the cross Clements comes for it with some confidence and also a good throw which changes this well it would have changed the game completely but has it overran it this is Vanden Howe Hoddle wins it against Broadhurst and he's oh Byron Stevenson on Garth Crooks. Now then, referee may say, goal scoring opportunity, I wonder. Not the worst trip in the world, but Byron Stevenson caught Garth Crooks. Not too far inside the Birmingham half, in fairness to him either. Glenn Hoddle got away with one of those at Manchester United, and a booking suffices. And I don't think too many of us neutrals would disagree with that. in the air comes through to hit the bar it comes down a Tottenham player handled but that was the most promising Tottenham attack and it followed a free kick which in turn was given because Spurs had almost broken through I think there are times in a match these days with Spurs when just need somebody to bring a little bit of uh, order and variety to it and that's precisely what's been missing while our deal is has been away. Keith Birkinshaw well aware of that. That's uh, Ferguson on the far side. And a hectic and fitful first half in which Gary Mabbott's header that smacked against the bar was the nearest we came to a goal. Tottenham have a number of players perhaps not quite hitting peak form. And it's because Ozzy Ardiles might come back and uh, bring the best out of the others. But that's one very good reason why Keith Birkinshaw missed the first 20 minutes having just got back from Paris well that's not Ozzy Ardiles dressed up as Santa Claus but certainly for the Tottenham supporters Christmas has come early with today's announcement and one man who will be enjoying Christmas is the new Tottenham chairman Douglas Alexiou in the Spurs scarf there in the front row of the director's box as Spurs start the second half playing from the right against a Birmingham team whose last five away matches in Division One have all been draws. 
four of them have been nil-nil, in fact. Which is the position here. Brooks. Here he is again. Hagen. Langen. Offside flags up. Ferguson and Hartford work very hard there to avoid being offside and Ferguson in his frustration kicked the ball away when the decision was given and he's being booked. I understand uh, his reaction in one way because he'd worked very, very hard to avoid getting caught although Hartford on our near side was also up and the linesman flagged. So Spurs free kick. Brooks has started a run. Blake is there. I'll give Birmingham's defenders credit. Up to now. And ball will put them under closer scrutiny, but they have battled well there, Blake and his colleagues, to stem Spurs' normal passing and running game. There's a roar from the crowd because the Tottenham sub Gary Brook is warming up, Hoddle takes the kick meantime, Roberts with a flick and John Lacey who hasn't scored in the league for two years but that anniversary falls today and when Glenn Hoddle curled the kick in faintest touch from Roberts and Lacey's shot, one of the best of the afternoon Just under 25 minutes left as Ricky Villiard departs and Gary Brook replaces him. Reputation's not counting for much in the Tottenham team at the moment as they strive to find their real rhythm. Crooks was taken off last week, Villiard this week. Hoddle. And Mabbott to Crooks. Gary Brook in the centre and so is Galvin. And Crooks wins a corner from Van den Howe. For which Lacey and Roberts are making their way forward. Lacey! That's his second timely effort, but it found Tony Coton standing in just the right place. holding there, the referee decides it was more by Harford than by Perryman free kick driven forward, on by Mabbott here he is again specialist in volleying the ball but Gary Mallard has shown for Spurs in England that he can strike them as well and that one just flew in the left-hand side of Tony Coton a brilliant goal by Mabbott pushed forward today to play an Archibald's position unlucky in the first half when he hit the bar but on that occasion he hit the back of the net. And what a versatile young man he is. Back four, midfield, centre forward. And he always seems to have some effect on the game. Not always as startling as that. But here's Gary Brook. the referee's nose if he wants to stop the game he lets Spurs have the advantage Crooks to Brook and Brook hits one what a fine save by Tony Coton Gary Brook himself a specialist in the powerful drive from distance but Tony Coton got that one away Birmingham are going to make a substitution any minute now 
question of Ian Hand decides attracting the attention of the referee. He'll have to wait. Glenn Hoddle with the corner. Oh, well, I think the, the loudspeaker has almost made the referee's mind up for him. It stopped the game, and off goes Mick Ferguson, and on comes Ian Handesides. Spurs. Perryman. Hazard. And Brook. And Brooks couldn't make it. Against a very determined Noel Blake. Oh, and that was uh, Lacey clattering in. Oh, Birmingham now in the position where they've got to take a few risks. And decides. Dylan. Glenn Hollow picking up the Ray Clements throw. Spreading the play wide to Hewton. Intentions of Galvin were read well by Hagen, who's done very nicely against him today, but will be penalised there. Certainly hasn't allowed Galvin too much scope, Jim Hagen, but concedes the free kick. Ten minutes left, Spurs one up. It was a free kick that produced that goal indirectly. This one is rather nearer to the 18-yard line, and Lacey and Mabbott are waiting for Hoddle to cross. And the header away coming from Dennis, so it's a corner. And they work it back again to Galvin. And Lacey will get a touch here. And Mavet does Crooks offside. Offside won't count. Lacey got the first touch, Mavet got the second, but Crooks offside as he put the ball in the net. the power behind the throw now at White Hart Lane Douglas Alexiou the new chairman in the Spurs scarf and Irving Scholar next to him who masterminded the takeover well won again by Roberts on by Hoddle to Brook and now Mabbott to Crooks and back to Mabbott what a brilliant move oh is it going in Mabbott what a brilliant move by Spurs little ricochet at the end favoured them but they deserved that the interchange from the minute Roberts first touched the ball was superb. Hoddle, Crooks involved. Crooks jabbed it forward, past the goalkeeper it went, and Mabbott ran it in. Seven minutes from the end, number two for Tottenham and number two for Gary Mabbott. Sides for Birmingham. Oh, and off Clements, and here comes David Langan. And a goal pulled back four minutes from the end. The break initially was by Handy Sides, the substitute. The shot coming back off the body of Ray Clements, and David Langan, on his return to the Birmingham side, scores his second goal of the season. The other one was a penalty. They've worked hard. They kept Tottenham at bay until 20 minutes from the end. Went two behind, but at least they've had a say now, Birmingham City. Three points for Spurs. And put this man where you like, he always seems to have an effect on the game. Two goals earlier this season for the under-21s from right-back Gary Mabbott. Two goals in midfield here against Forest, I remember. Two goals today as a striker in place of Steve Archibald. 
a true versatile player. The first goal volleyed venomously. The second, a lovely build-up. Birmingham got one back, but they're still in relegation trouble despite David Langan's late effort. And Spurs win by two goals to one.